might be. Who are you and what's your game? Isn't my dear old chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends the is about to stab you in the back? The vital step in reforming our government. If the majority party is allowed to dictate the results of contested elections, we can scarcely call ourselves free. If we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely call ourselves free, sir. This is so like you, Gladstone. You would rather throw your body upon the gears of progress than surrender one iota of power. By God, Disraeli, you are a fool. I'll not stand idly by and watch you drag parliamentary privilege through the muck. No, certainly not. You'd rather to return us to your tyranny. Perhaps while we're at it, Mr. Gladstone, we could repeal Magna Carta and return the crown to the bloody Stuarts. How? Dare Merely because I do not wish to see government placed in the hands of judges, you would make these slanderous accusations? I'll not stand for it! Then I shall obviate the requirement. Good evening, sir. Resume. Pleasure to meet you. B. B. My name's Herbert. Then why are you following the Prime Minister? It's just a job, sir! Some old bloke paid me just... Smug bastard. Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, uh, I never got his name. Uh, old chap, big moustache, wore some kind of uniform. Who's ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, you'll kill me. 
And a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lights are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Perfect. So much for the house call. I have to find a way into that carriage. of this who the devil are you prime minister i'm your new bodyguard jacob fry i wasn't informed of any new bodyguard who's your commanding officer let the boy speak dizzy <laughs> madam apologies but we've learned of a threat on your life and the met thought it best to move quickly threat what sort of threat <gasps> that sort if you excuse me a moment
Not so fast, Your Excellency. about Gladstone, young man. I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large mustache. You seem like a rough and ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. <laughs> well, yes, I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's Acre. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, eight o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day, Mr. Fry. Madam? Mr. Fry? Ready to take the air? Devil's Acre should just be coming alive. I'm afraid I must cancel our engagement. The lawn is crawling with scandal-hunting journalists, and I simply cannot be seen in the company of someone so... I'll see them off. You follow along when it's clear. Yes, yes. Uh, be gentle, won't you? The press are notoriously touchy about any violence to their person. <laughs> I'll barely ruffle a hair on their heads. Shh, Desmond.
that's yours if you can get those chaps over there to follow me. Right you are, sir. Best lead them astray before they tear me to shreds. Mr. Bancroft, Mr. Bancroft, what's coming up next for the Prince of Wales? Will you be performing Mr. Robertson's new work? Who will you be playing? Any comment on the notice? Done, young man. Dizzy ought to keep you on to deal with the liberals. Now. Yeah, in the cart, it's the Prime Minister's wife. I really must not be seen here, Mr. Prime. <laughs>
What a rough place. Give me your arm, Mr. Fry. Let us see what the Devil's Acre has to offer. Your dog quite all right. Oh, Desmond's fine. He's just not over fond of strangers. Or cats. No, this gentleman is a... Oh, what was it? Yes. A costermonger, of all things. Remarkable how the working classes occupy themselves, isn't it? Very industrious, I'm sure. Shall we go? Mr. Fry, 
Look at those two. Uh, uh yes, they, uh, they seem to be, um... I've been married twice, Mr. Fry. I'm fully aware of what they're doing. God bless them. What sort of meat is that man selling? Best not to ask. Why? Is it something dreadful? <gasps> is it rat? I don't mean to be indelicate, given the present company, but another name for it is Bow Wow Mutton. Here we are, the old one ton. Hmm. So, this is a pint, is it? Huh? <sighs> Remarkable. Nice doggy. Mm. Desmond, hand over the mutt. You'll change your tune when me and my friends find you. Now then, Desmond, to get you back to your mistress, whom I've just left entirely unattended in one of London's most dangerous pubs. Well, if you never told your father how you felt about him, how was he supposed to know? I never thought of it that way. I suppose deep down we all just want to be loved. Just so. Mm. Here, have a sweetie. Oh, Desmond and Mr. Fry. I'd like you to meet... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't catch your name. John the Tosser. Charmed. I think we'd better get you home. Right you are, Mr. Fry. Come along, Desmond. <laughs> well, well, well. If it isn't the dog walker. <laughs> now, let's not do something we'll regret. Do you know where I might find him for a private conversation? I do indeed. He's in town now, as it happens. Campaigning against the corrupt practice. Your stop, madam. My stop? <laughs> How delightful. Thank you. Thank you for a splendid evening, Mr. Fry. I shall be sure to speak highly of you to Dizzy. <laughs> oh, yes. 